Hi, I'm Roger from SignalHound, and uh, today I'm going to introduce our new noise figure software. Uh, this has been a very highly requested measurement, so uh, we're very happy to bring it to you. Um, as always, it's a free measurement uh, mode provided by Spike, and it's compatible with our SM200 and BB60 series devices. So, so why noise figure? Well, noise figure is one of the most useful measurements of noise produced by a device. Now, any electrical system, there will be noise present, and as long as the signal is much higher, uh, that's okay. But these days, weak, weak signals are common. Um, there's so many RF devices and electronic devices with IoT and mobile devices um, that there's a lot of interference. There's physical obstacles, brick walls, concrete walls. Often, signals are expected to travel long distances. So it's all these things just lead to attenuated signals, and it's so it's more and more important for um, devices to be increasingly sensitive. And um, noise figure is one of the best ways to characterize the device's noise contribution. Um, and so that's exactly what noise figure is. It is a measure of the noise a device adds to a signal as it passes through it. Um, we express that as the degradation in signal to noise ratio. Um, as the signal goes through. So the signal to noise ratio at the input of the device over the signal to noise ratio at the output of the device. Um, so that means lower is better because it's the lower the noise figure than the less noise, additional noise that the instrument is adding to the signal. So let's dive into Spike and take a look at the mode itself open spike from the beginning and I have an SM200A connected um, but like I, as I said it'll work for any of our SM200 or BB60 series devices so I'll go to analysis mode and go to noise figure and you can see that unlike some of our modes it's it's not a continuously running mode because it's a measurement that takes um, a few steps that the mode will walk you through so just a quick overview of the interface. You can see the plots here. It's pretty straightforward. There's two measurements that are taken with this mode, noise figure and gain. And you see there's a plot for each. And this table um, will also show those results in, in tabular fashion. Um, and then we have one simple control panel where you'll configure your measurement. So let's Let's go ahead and configure our measurement and, and I'll walk through the control panel while we do that. So up at the top, there's some familiar parameters, but they mean something a little different here because this is defining our frequency list, the, the list of points um, at whose frequencies we're gonna take measurements. So we're actually gonna be doing sweeps at each one of those points. So start, stop, center, span are defining not the sweep that we take at each point, but what the actual points are. So we can define, so we're going to be, the device we're gonna be measuring, the device under test, is going to be this TechBox wideband amplifier, which we sell in our EMC probe kit, uh, which you can find on our website and our products. And so, this device is a three megahertz to three gigahertz device. So let's take that as, as the measurement parameters. So three megahertz to three gigahertz. Um, and center and span would just be a different way of defining the beginning and end of the, the list. And then the number of points, so 11, let, let's do 101. And, and the reason I'm using kind of odd off by one numbers is just so that the measurements will line up evenly with these 10 grid lines on the Graticule. Now, if you wanted to just do a single measurement, a single sweep at one point, you could select fixed and just type in the frequency you want. But let's do, let's do a few more than that. We want to sweep the whole device. Ref level is as it, as it always is. Defines the ref level for each sweep. Um, RBW and VBW also, as you would expect, um, for each sweep. And then mesh span, that is the span of each sweep that at, that's done at each point. 
So we'll leave it at the default of four megahertz. And then averaging, you can do one sweep at each point or you can average some number of sweeps. So we'll turn on averaging and we'll leave it on 10. And then room temperature, 290K is the default room temperature, it's commonly used default. Um, if you have a thermometer and want to enter uh, your exact room temperature, you can have a more exact measurement. Now we come to the ENR tables. Now your noise sources are going to, well, we'll show it. Um, we'll have an ENR table, which basically defines the, uh, the noise temperature of that um, noise source when it's powered on, which are used in the calculations. So you'll need to enter in um, that table and you'll need to do it manually to begin with. But if you want to do it quickly, you can edit active table and enter in some measurements. But since I want to enter it in once and be able to use it again in the future, I will. I want to enter it in our persistent list of noise sources, which I can access via this Manage ENR Tables button. So we'll go here and I'll go to Add a New Noise Source. And I will name it Keysight 346B. You can put the serial number if you're so inclined. And then I'll go to edit points. And then I'm just going to edit in these points, which I'm, in this case, is printed on the device. Sometimes it might be in, in the device's manual or something like that. All right, so bear with me or, or um, you know, be fast forwarded through this part as I enter in these values. Okay, so I've entered in all my ENR values um, in my table, and this will automatically be saved in the program. Um, however, you could also save it out onto your computer somewhere. Okay, and boom. Okay, so we're done adding our source, so I can exit out of the manager. And then I just need to select my noise source and we'll see it will be populated here and we'll just tell you um, what your noise source is, how many points it has, and if you wanted to quickly edit that active table that's in memory, you could do that here. Um, but again, that won't be persistent over to your next session. I'm gonna plug in my equipment. Okay, so let's get started with the measurement. Um, so noise figure is an indirect measurement in that it there's two there, it measures two systems and then kind of computes the difference between them. Uh, the first is the calibration system, which is just the noise source in on and off powered states and the receiver. And then the next is just with the DUT added into that. And so if you subtract which is called the measurement system. So if you subtract um, the calibration system from the measurement system, you're basically left with the DUT uh, noise figure, which is what we're after. So the good thing about that is that uh, if you do one calibration measurement, then that will hold and you can do as many, uh, you can as measure as many different DUTs or take as many measurements of one DUT as you, you'd like, uh, as long as you're not changing any parameters in which case you'd have to redo the calibration measurement. Um, so just as a note, we use the Y-factor technique, uh, which is a common technique to calculate noise figure, which basically puts our power measurements in terms of noise temperature. Um, if you'd like more info on the equations and how that works, uh, you can look in the Spike user manual under noise figure, uh, where we've outlined kind of the derivation of those equations. So let's get started. Um, I will go up here and these are the two buttons 
for this mode. So we'll go and calibrate. And now it will begin to walk me through the measurement. So connect noise source directly to spectrum analyzer. I'll do that. Okay, that's done. I'll click OK. Turn noise, so noise source on. Okay, I've now turned it on. I'll say OK. Take measurements. Now turn the noise source off. Turn it off. Okay, take more measurements. Boom, and that's the end of the calibration step. And as I said, you can I can now take measurements until uh, a setting changes. Okay, so let's let's do the measurement. Same thing, basically the same process, except now connect the noise source to the DUT to the spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to insert the tech box wideband amplifier uh, between the noise source and the SM200A spectrum analyzer. Okay, so I've inserted the DUT in the signal chain, so I'll select OK. Turn noise source off. Well, it's already off from the calibration step. Take some more measurements. Turn the noise source on. I've turned it on. Take more measurements, and it's doing those 10 sweeps at each point and then averaging them. Okay, and boom. There are results looks about like what we would expect. Um, you can see on the two plots of noise figure and gain. And of course these plots have our usual characteristics where uh, we can put a marker on them and kind of move from point to point and see the, the readout over here. Um, we can zoom in to graph and look more closely at some of these points. Go back to our previous zoom. We can do a peak search. Uh, we can do a min search down here, um, and and whatnot. All the things you can normally do on our on our plots. You can change the uh, the scale of the y-axis um, and move it around, or the x-axis. So anyway, um, now down here uh, we have it in tabular form, and we can export that as a CSV file if we would like. So I'll just call it nfmej and go into that folder and just kind of quickly show what we end up with. So then we can have this nice table for Excel or whatever we want. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can email support at signalhound.com and um, we're always right there. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.